Welcome everybody, you're on The Drive with Denise DeGregoli. We're a platform for positivity, a purpose-driven motivational podcast that helps you create a better business and live your best life mindfully. It's how you fuel your mind, your body, your spirit that ultimately shapes your life you live. So wherever you are in the world today, we're so thankful that you joined us. Uh, airing live and on Fabulous Friday, we're coming in a day early because it's the New Year's Eve holiday weekend. And we always start the show with a mindful minute. What I want to talk to you guys about today, you'll find it in my book, Random Acts of Kindness. I always say, what random acts of kindness can you do? It's about shifting energy out and shifting energy in, inviting things into your life that you want, but you can't do it without, you know, kind of stirring things up. So I often talk about it to my 14-year-old daughter, and we were out doing holiday shopping and trying to be mindful and not be crazy in the traffic and, you know, get angered by people that were kind of cutting in front of us. And we were at a drive-in. Yes, I took her to one of those crazy drive-in food places because she was so patient and so helpful. And we got up to pay for our order, and the, and the lady at the window said, you're all set. Happy holidays. And I was like, what? Are you for real? And she was like, yeah, your order's paid for by the person in front of you. The greatest thing was the look on my daughter's face when she was like, you know, it just came to be. I had been kind of talking about it on and off, but she saw in action someone other than myself doing it, a random act of kindness. Somebody paid for our order. And, you know, it was a sizable order. So we paid for the person in back of us, and we tipped the lady at the window. We said, keep this energy going, right? Invite into your life what you want by giving stuff out. So my mindful minute today is, you know, miracles and magic happen, and it really comes down to our perception and how we think about things and how we react to things. And that leads me to my most fabulous guest, speaker, life coach, author, performer, clinical hypnotist, but the author of Imagine That. And you know what? We couldn't have somebody better with us today than James Mapes to lead us into the new year with his new best-selling book. James, are you with us? I am here. Welcome to The Drive. We're so thankful that you came on. You had time to fit us in. I know you're getting ready to travel uh, for vacation and for some speaking engagements, so welcome. Uh, and thanks for taking the time to tell us a little bit about Imagine That. First of all, we love the name. And I know it's 13 years in the making, so it's no small project. Tell us just a bit about Imagine That and what it strives to do for your audience. Well, let me give you an overview quickly, and that is that Imagine That is really, I hope, one of the definitive books about how to apply the imagination. And just for your listeners, there's a difference between imagination and creativity. Imagination is, is kind of a wild child that can be taken anywhere, positive or negative. But when you mindfully and purposefully apply it to achieving an outcome, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, socially, you that's been a, been a goal. Then you have creativity. And so what I've done is started how the mind works, tools for thinking. Uh, I've covered areas of how do you know when you're loved, uh, visualization, a chapter on overcome, recognizing and overcoming fears, uh, a chapter on letting go, a chapter on forgiveness, but very specific exercises. And what makes this book unique it's the first book of its kind that has 21 video links that you can go to of me coaching you from three to six minutes with visual demonstrations of all the ideas about reframing the mind, about setting life priorities. And I will tell you that I took the time to not only read the book, but to check out all the videos. And what I loved about it was it was like James Mates on call 24-7. It was like a refresher course, and it was like if you, you know, if you're tired and you just want to turn on the video and have James kind of give you the refresher course and motivate you, I thought it was an outstanding concept to have, you know, the digital reference there available. Let's tell the audience a little bit about this, the five keys and the six hats, because I like how you tie things together, and I want to touch down on your 
your phrase that resonates with me so much. When I'm steering my energy or my thoughts, and I'm a busy, busy lady, and those negative thoughts creep in for all of us, you know, the fear of what we're doing, the fear of what we're producing, the fear of what's next, your, your go-to phrase, isn't that interesting? Let's tie it all together for our audience, because I really want people to take away from our chat today something they can use in the new year. That's what I call a little mindfulness, when you can hit that pause button, right? And you can yes, kind of yes. shift your energy instead of going to the negative, you know, doom and gloom. But just hit that pause button and say, isn't that interesting? You kind of free up so much other energy instead of layering on sort of negativity and blame. And I know that you, you propose zero blame in your book. And I know that you also say, use and not but, and avoid shoulds. And one thing I say regularly on this program is we will not should on each other. So change, you say, happens two times in the brain. Let's talk about that. Well, first of all, change, you, let's go to the second part of it. The second part is you, well, first, first part is that you decide to change. And, and so it's, it's a decision. And the second part, and then there's the, 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 the whole process of achieving the change, but then it's achieving the new normal. And what, what I want people to take away from this is the change really, as much as I like to think it does, and I've been teaching this for years, it happens instantly. The decision can happen, happen instantly, but it takes a little while to, while to rewire your brain. When, it's, when the change happens, you don't, you have to be very conscious of what's changed in your world because internally that's now your new reality or the new normal. Mm -hmm. So the great thing to do about for the new year is, is achieving change. There's a couple things. And one is what, what do you want to change mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, or socially? And then very specifically write down or record how would I know when it changed? Oh, that's a great one because we all put together these lofty goals like I want to lose weight, I want to start a business, I want to make a you know X amount of dollars. And as we talked offline, our audience and uh, me too needs to be very specific and know. I guess you're saying know how it would feel when you know that it's changed. So help that's us right. write. And that's part. Of, yeah, that's part of the visualization process, and that's what changes the brain. Visualization is the language of the subconscious. So when you start your visualization process of living in the ideal end outcome. And how do you, how do I want it to look? How do I want it to feel? How, what would be said? How would I know? And also, but there's another part to that is you don't, you know, people say achieve lofty goals, but when they understand how the mind works, how the subconscious works, uh, it's important to realize that if you over, if you over, uh, an idea. For example, if I said to myself, "Okay, I want to, I want to lose 100 pounds in two months," your, your whole subconscious is just going to shut down because that's not logical. That, in fact, that creates fear 
in the 90% or 90% part of you that controls your thinking, which is the subconscious. So you want to be very specific. You can do, I talk about achieving a stretch goal, which means that you stretch just enough without scaring the heck out of yourself subconsciously. Okay, and you talk about that as the artist of possibility. So each one of us, you say, is the artist of possibility. Of course, I like that because Troy and I come from a very artistic background. So I resonate with that word. But what about people that don't? What does artist of possibility mean? Well, artist of possibility is meaning that you, simply meaning that you make a choice to better yourself, whatever that word means to you, on, every, on whatever level you choose. So you can be an artist of destruction. You can be an artist. But you can, you know, you can worry. You can blame. You can live in fear of rejection, change, success, failure, commitment. And that's not. And not. And I don't want your listeners to think that's something we choose. It is. This is where we go back to mindfulness. We can live as a as a an artist of destruction in our lives and not even know it if we're not mindful. So an artist of possibility means that you have you, you have hope, which is every that, that there can be change, and then you learn the tools, which if imagine that I teach very specific and every tool I think you need to be able to let go of that which is not working in your life and then reconstruction. As an artist with a canvas and we paint it. And it doesn't matter and this is extremely important. It doesn't matter if you're 25, 55, I'm 72, and I'm still cranking and creating new stuff. Uh, my buddy's 84, one of my friends, and he's just starting a new business and being successful. So it doesn't matter what your age is because mm -hmm. the brain is malleable, and we can actually change it in five minutes, and we can learn the tools to reinforce it. There's two audio clips that come with the book with the 21 video clips. One is stress reduction. You just listen to it, go in. You know, that, that changes your brain for like six hours. And the second one is forgiveness. I think, you know, I've experienced some of your uh, audio clips that have been life-changing for me in ways that I've expressed to you. So I encourage all of our listeners when they get your book to check that out. It's, it's jam packed with such information. Now here's where I stumbled with it because when I'm going to manage my thinking as I do in my daily drive and my nine minutes of active meditation and steering my thoughts and mind mapping and using the principles and imagine that I love, isn't that interesting? And I really got some momentum and I'm feeling myself and I'm practicing what I preach. And then all of a sudden I have an off day and it seems like, you know, chicken little, the world is crumbling in and all is for naught. And now I'm, I, all of a sudden I put myself at, I've got to start at square zero. What do I do? And I think uh, many times it's whether it's an exercise program, it's a weight loss program, it's a stop smoking program. I'm sure you've seen it in clinical hypnotist work. What do you do to tell the audience of Imagine That and my listeners, like, don't fall off the wagon permanently. Get back on. What's that mental exercise? Where does that stretch goal come in that we can keep going when we fail well, or perceived say, fail? Uh, the simple, this is simple advice. My first book was called Quantum Weight Thinking. What I noticed after 14, uh, 14 years of writing and studying from 25 is that when people have a stretch goal, they make a leap. Then there's a plateau. Every time you make a bigger leap, there's a larger plateau, a longer plateau. And part of it is knowing that that plateau, every time you grow, is going to be a little longer. It's what you do in the gap of the achievement. And, and so I said, by the way, I have off days, and I wake up sometime and I go, wait a minute. I just, you know, uh, I get just two things I do, <clears throat> and it always works. Uh, it was actually three. One is, I will always do some kind of physical activity, always. Two is, I will give myself permission to just take time off, do what I have to do. Right? I don't shirk my duties, but just say, you know what, today, I call it an eraser day. That's not in the book. And I am going to just be gentle with myself. Because I know, I have faith, I have hope, because I've been in this business a long time, and I know from coaching people for 40 some years, you'll get back on track. If you're not beating yourself up, just give yourself a day to achieve what needs to be done. Do what you've got to do. Read a fiction book. Go get a little exercise. You'll be back on track. 
that because everything changes. And by the way, we're a we're a, a walking test tube. <laughs> that means that chemistry plays a bit of a role in this. What we eat, how we move, and just general changes in our body, uh, in our mind. So just give yourself a little break and be gentle. You'll get back on track as long as you have that that stretch goal, that visualization, that end outcome in mind. You've written it down. You've carried with whatever you do that works for you. You'll be back the next day. Well, I also like the fact that you say that the blind spots are a result of our conditioning. So we can think we're going along great and we hit a blind spot. Maybe it's fear of rejection. You know, maybe it's some it's some previous conditioning that we're trying to break. And I think that's great advice because when you allow yourself, right, and we don't should on each other and should on ourselves, I think the allowing and the hope, I think that's very important, especially nowadays, hope faith and allowing and just kind of putting one foot in front of the other. And I'm really big on the reframing of the thinking. Do you want to talk a little bit about the five keys that you have in your book, which I find are outstanding? Uh, well, they're, they're a little more amorphous than actual action steps, but one of, one of the keys is uh, to accept reality as it is. And I'll tell you that sounds hopeful. like Napoleon Hill's positive mental attitude and we take it for granted right and it's something that we really can control because it's a choice even in the darkest of days we can tr control how we react to things and thank you for that too yeah <laughs> You know what, James? It has been such an outstanding morning joining with you together to bring our listeners into the new year. And as we get ready to sign off, and the new year we're working on nine times two. You know, the Daily Drive, my book, is based on nine minutes of active meditation and, and mindfulness and writing things down. So we're working on the podcast being nine times two or 18 minutes, and we're just a smidge over. But do you want to leave our guests with any quick how-tos or thoughts to propel them or give them good fuel for 2018. Absolutely. I'm going to give you a quick exercise. Whenever you feel stressed, whenever you feel hopeless, whenever you feel down, this takes about 60 seconds. You sit down with a piece of paper on your computer. You lift everything that is bothering you, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and socially. Take a breath. You go back and eliminate all the single things that you cannot 
have control. And you've already given yourself control. And then if you want, you go back and take what's left, and you write one small action step. Could be making a phone call, could be cleaning your, your space. And, and I would, it's, a, it's a miracle. I give this to every coach and client. Well, I have to say, it's always a pleasure speaking with you, James. You bring so much positive energy to the platform. I hope that we will see you live in the new year again. And please tell our audience how to find your book. Yes, uh, go to my website, jamesmapes, M-A-P-E-S dot com. You can access the book from there uh, through Amazon. But even more importantly, go to my homepage, sign up for my almost monthly, monthly newsletter. Mm -hmm. And it's in the right-hand corner. And every month I will send you a, about an 800-word article, either from the new book or something like I'm working on one from how to conquer loneliness right now. And, uh, and you'll, 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 you can share it with your friends and family. Thanks so much, James. Listen, everybody, you're on the drive with Denise Ugregoli. Thanks for tuning in. If you like it, please share it. You can visit me at Denise. Grigley, that's D-I-G-R-I-G-O-L-I dot com for more news updates. And if you'd like to be a guest, you can tell us there. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great new year. That was it. We're off time. There we go. There we go. So that, hold, hold on one second. Yeah.